Well, hey, Connect Church, uh, welcome to this Friday's version of our Hear Journals. Uh, we hope that you'll go ahead and turn into the Gospel of John chapter 20. We're going to be reading verses 1 through 18 today as we study through uh, the great resurrection story. John chapter 20, verses 1 through 18. And so let me just dive into our text. And so that's where we start at. We want you to be exploring the Word of God, understanding it at an even deeper level so that we can process it. So early, that great passage, early on Sunday morning, while it was still dark, um, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb, found the stone had been rolled away from the entrance. She ran and found Simon Peter and the other disciples and the one whom Jesus loved. And she said, they have taken the Lord's body out of the tomb and we don't know where they have put him. Peter and the other disciple started out of the tomb and they were both running. But the other disciple outran Peter, reached the tomb first. He stopped, he stooped and looked in and saw the linens lying there, but he didn't go in. And then Simon Peter arrived and he went in inside and he also noticed that the linens wrappings lined there and while the cloth and the covering of Jesus head was folded and lined apart from the other wrappings then the disciple had reached the tomb first also went in and he saw and believed significant for until then they had still understood the scriptures that Jesus must rise from the dead and then they went home and so what a what a beautiful text and then we're going to highlight just a little bit more there uh, and starting in verse 11 here in just a second but uh, let's Let's just dive into that first part of the story. And so this is Resurrection uh, Sunday, and this is why we have church on the first day of the week, and we no longer observe the Old Testament law of the Sabbath, because the New Testament church would meet and gather to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It doesn't get any more positive than this in the midst of the coronavirus and all the things that are going on in your life and mine today. Uh, as we explain this story, this is our, our highlight is simply today is the resurrection of Jesus Christ that carries the whole story. Our explanation is, is Jesus arises, uh, raised from the grave. And so we see that he is no longer in the tomb and that Mary Magdalene, the other ladies come and the disciples, uh, you know, they come into the situation and they say, you know, that there's nobody in there. And so, wow, uh, you know, we know this story. We hear it over and over again. But, but ladies and gentlemen, let me just remind you, uh, this is a story that we can never hear enough. Uh, we, we are constantly Constantly in our human frailties, uh, forgetting about the power of Jesus overcoming death uh, and the sin and, and hell. And so that is the significance that we constantly need to remember this story. And, and it's powerful. And so further on along in the explanation, as we get to verse 11 and notice that Mary was standing outside the tomb and carrying and she went and stooped in and looked in and she saw two white robed angels one sitting on the head and the other at the foot of the place where the body of Jesus had been lying and and she said dear women why are you crying are the the angel said dear woman why are you crying and the angel asked her and she said because they've taken away my Lord and she replied I don't know where they put him and so she was thinking somebody stole the body she turned to leave and saw someone standing there and it was Jesus this, but she didn't recognize him. This is significant. Dear woman, why are you crying? And Jesus asked her, who are you looking for? And she thought he was the gardener. <laughs> I love that. And he said, sir, and she said, sir, and, and then if you taken him away, tell me where you put him and I will go and get him. And then Jesus responds, verse 16, and I love this, and he simply says her name. And she turned to him and cried out, Rabboni, which is Hebrew for teacher. And she hugs Jesus, no coronavirus, and he says, well, you can't do it right now because I'm getting ready to go away to my father. And then Mary Magdalene found the disciples and she told them and uh, she gave them the message of the resurrection of Christ. All right, so that's the story. There's really no other way to write that in your hear journal except just to tell the story of the scriptures. It is significant. It's powerful. And now I want to just simply get to how it applies to your life and mine. First of all, I wrote in my application in my HEAR journal, uh, keep that with you at all times, because the, the important thing of doing HEAR journals is now where we get to how does this change my life. Here's a couple of tidbits that just jumped out at me. Number one, uh, I love the story, the part of the story, we'll talk about that in just a second, where it says that Jesus, uh, the disciples, remember what Jesus had taught, the significance of why you guys need to daily be in the Word of God. 
that. I, I just got done uh, doing my uh, walking and my prayer time, praying over you guys, praying over oh, reopening in this church, praying over my personal struggles. And today's my day of Thanksgiving and Thursday, just praising God for everything he's done, giving me the Holy Spirit, uh, reminded me of what I read in my personal here journals this morning. Guys, we constantly, I know, I have a theo master's degree in theology, and I constantly, daily, have to remember the teachings of Jesus. And when the disciples saw the empty tomb, then they got the message. That's why we constantly have to daily be in the Word of God. And that's what I wrote down. I constantly have to pray. I constantly have to be in the Word of God because I forget the power that God is with me and that He is alive. And so this is, you know, this story just reminds us again and again of why we do this. And then the other piece that I love about that was verse 16. And this is so cool. And this is another reason why you guys need to daily. This is why we do discipleship at Connect Church, guys. I love you all, but we've got to get into this. So I'm motivating you as a coach today. And here's what we need you to do is you daily need prayer time with God and you daily need time in his word because the devil's going to rob you of that knowledge. He's going to rob you of the truth that God is for you. And notice with everything that was going on, she was having a conversation with the risen Lord. She didn't recognize him until what? Verse 16. And Jesus says, Mary. Do you know what happened to me in my prayer time today? <laughs> God spoke to me. This is why some of y'all quit praying and you quit reading his word. I was overwhelmed with all this crap that I got to deal with and the church and the governor and everything that is going on right now is so heavy weighted about trying to reopen church and what we're doing and we're frustrated and I want to make changes in my personal life and everything else. But as I prayed and I cast my cares upon God, he spoke into me and said, Terry, I'm here. The weight of the church is not on you, it's my church. You follow me and I just have a peace. It's going to be okay. Whatever decisions I make today, it's going to be okay in my personal life and in this because in my prayer time, I heard Jesus, not in an audible voice, but in my presence, I heard him saying, Terry, I love you. I saved you. It's okay. I'm here with you to anoint you. All right, let me give you one last quick application because I promised Tanner this would be really short. And so let me wrap all this up today. Um, Swindoll points this out in his commentary, and it's really good, too, uh, that I added to my personal application. Some believed, and this is cool, some believed with indirect evidence. In other words, after the resurrection, some believed to the, in, the initial report with curiosity and then when they went and saw the empty tomb, that's what I mean by indirect evidence, then they believed. Some believed, number two, with direct evidence. They were either confused or doubtful until they saw the risen Lord with their own eyes. Number three, some were slow to believe with direct evidence. They initially responded to the Lord's presence, but because of fear, because of political climate, all of that, they were slow to come around. And then number four, some believed without evidence, indirect or direct. There were those who just simply believed that Jesus and what he had said he was going to do and never hesitated. They never wavered. And when Jesus was alive, they go, see, I told you that way. You know, all that shouts out at us today. Welcome to the church family at Connect Church. That means that we're going to have different people who have different levels of faith, who have different levels, and not one is greater than the other. It just means that we're coming to experience Jesus in our own personality and our own unique ways, but as long as we're coming to Jesus, whether we're a little slow, whether you're a little bit quicker to jump on board, you're ready to go gung-ho, you need those people that need a little bit more time, be patient with each other, work together, but here's the thing, Jesus only appeared to those that believed in him. Whatever four levels they were, you were on today, I'm just telling you, you continue to pray, you continue to do your hear journals, you continue to believe in the resurrection, and watch what God speaks into your heart. And if you'll listen, he'll call you by name today as well. God bless you.